Hey everyone, my name is Ujwal. I'm a final year chemistry student here at the George Washington University in DC. And today I'm going to talk to you about how I scored in the 99th percentile for the biochem section on the MCAT. Let's get started. It is so great to see you again. My name is Ujwal. I took my MCAT one year ago, so my spring semester of junior year. And since then, I've basically been applying to med school, going on interviews, so that's been a very fun, um, very exhausting process. I uh, can't believe the year just flew by. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've been doing. The interview season has finally uh, come to a conclusion, and um, that's basically where I'm at. And so today, I'm going to talk to you about how you can score very high on the biochem section of the MCAT. A lot of questions I get asked are, how to do well in that section, right? The MCAT is a biochem heavy exam. There's a lot of chemistry in the exam, obviously. We gotta take gen chem or go biochem before we really jump in and take the exam. So there's a lot of stuff you need to know. But what a lot of students don't realize is there's an equal amount of stuff you don't need to know, right? So that's a common pitfall that a lot of students fall into. Um, mistake I made myself, right, when I was preparing. So when I was preparing, I didn't have a lot of time. I was doing it my spring semester of junior year. Yeah, and so I was balancing a full course load on top of my MCAT prep. I'm gonna make another video talking about how I did that exactly, but this video is gonna be talking about how I've made an effective use of my time. And so one of the key things that I'm gonna tell you today is to use the AMC guidelines on what topics you need to know for each different subject. The AMC releases a whole list of everything you need to know for every content area that's covered on the MCAT for all of the four sections, right? Whether that be chemistry, physics, psych, and soch, they tell you what you need to know. And that can help guide your preparation. You don't need to study everything. You just need to focus on what you need to know. You don't need to go through certain topics in so much depth that tends to be covered in a lot of review books. And personally, I used Kaplan. And so Kaplan, for me, was a great resource but a lot of problems that I noticed were a lot of these review books go through a lot more material than you need to know. And so that's why, as I'm saying, once again, make sure you go through the guidelines on the AMC's website that they give you for all of the materials, all the different subject content areas, and make sure that you're only following those and checking off the boxes in terms of content. And you're not wasting your time on all of the little minor details. Right, so that's the first thing that you can do. Second thing is strategy. One of the main things I like to tell a lot of students is the MCAT requires 40% content, 60% strategy, and strategy also includes practice tests and how you do your practice tests, how you review your practice tests, right? So this video in particular is gonna focus on what kind of strategies you can use to maximize your score in the biochem section, right? So what makes the biochem section so hard? Well, we covered the first thing, that's there's a lot of material you need to know, and the best way to tackle that is making sure you know what you do need to know versus what you don't need to know, making that distinction early on. Second, those passages are dense, right? You've got 90 minutes, you're going to be sweeping through passages with questions after them, but those are going to be some of the densest 90 minutes you've ever spent. And that's because there are so many pathways, regulatory systems, mechanisms that they're going to be testing you. A lot of the information is provided. They don't expect you to know a lot of different things before you jump into that section. But one of the main things that gets a lot of students and differentiates those who do well versus those who don't is the fact that the passages contain a lot of information that is irrelevant to actually answering the questions. I'm going to link another video in the description where I'm going through a practice passage and showing you how you can use this strategy to maximize your score. But that's the key factor and that's the key point of the strategy. We need to separate what we need to know and what we don't need to know. When you make the comparison, it ends up being around 40% of the material in there is relevant. The rest is literally basic background intro material that you already should know. And that's not going to help you answer any of the questions, right? All right. So we talked about that. Why does a strategy work? And what does it really entail? Well, basically what the strategy does is it converts that textual information in the passage, that dense material, and takes the core 40% that's really important and puts that into a diagrammatic or pictorial representation. Why do you do that? Well, first things first, your brain can understand diagrams and pictures a lot better than text. Obviously, that makes sense. You know, when we go through our undergrad courses, I'm sure you guys realize that being quizzed and tested on pictures or diagrams was a whole lot easier than just straight up facts and content that were in sentences in these dense 
you know, textbooks we have for Gen Chem or Org or whatever it may be. And so that's the main thing. We are going to convert that text into a nice little pictorial representation that's going to be in chronological order, something that's easy for us to understand, and something that's going to require less brain power on the actual exam. That's going to effectively result in, hopefully, us getting through more questions in less time with a greater accuracy. That's the overall premise and goal of this strategy. All right, so we talked about how it works. What are some of the key details? Well, first things first, basically what we do is when we're going through the passages. First paragraph is going to be an intro paragraph, right? It's not going to give us too much content that we need to actually translate into our diagram. So we're not going to focus on that. We're going to keep that in the back of our minds for context, but we're not going to really focus on it. Then when you jump into the second, third, fourth, and however many paragraphs you have, that's where you start converting this into pictorial representation, which means you use shorthands, acronyms for all those complicated gene names and protein names. You use arrows to make connections between molecules that will activate another molecule, between molecules that will modify another molecule. You use arrows and things like that because when you're answering questions, you can quickly refer back to this diagram that you've now drawn. Usually when I went through this for each paragraph, I ended up having one diagram because that made it a whole lot easier for me to chronologically see what was going on in the system that was being described. And it allowed me to get a better understand the larger picture. A lot of the key points in these questions require you to understand the key picture. What is actually going on? What are we talking about? It's something that's really simple, something from Gen Bio, but it's going to be tested on a little bit more in depth. And that's where the biochem comes in. That's where biochem in terms of the pathways and the molecules will come in, right? So it requires us to know basic stuff, not too much depth and content, but it requires us to better synthesize that information. That's what that passage is testing you in that section. All right, so we went through the strategy. We talked about why it works, how it works, a little bit of the details and things like that. So now I'm going to go through a practice. Now that video is actually quite long, so I linked that in the description. Um, so I encourage you guys to check it out. If you guys really want to see how that strategy works in action, we go through a practice passage from the AMC sample test, um, passage one, and there's five questions afterwards. So I encourage you guys to take a look at that if you guys still have any more questions, but please definitely leave a comment. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in that next one.